With a countdown. Evening, everybody. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's not live, it's frozen. No, get ready. No. Uh, now we've got to find the next to Jenny. Right, close that down. Frozen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just a little bit. make you feel comfortable being frozen. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you back. Yeah. Right, we are live. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, April meeting of Buckingham Town Council Planning Committee. Before we start our meeting, we do have a public session for 15 minutes. We do have a member of the public here who'd like to speak. If you just introduce or stand up, introduce yourself. And, uh, yeah. You have up to 15 minutes if you want to. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm Dane Tobby, and I live at 21 Woodlands Crescent, and I'm the resident planning application, which is mm -hmm. gone in. Uh, Retrospects to you on the fence, which has been erected. Um, no, it does. Mm -hmm. It's on, my, it's not on my boundary base, it affects my house. And I'm kind of here because there has been quite a few objections, and I'm kind of here speaking on the majority of the street. Um, the, the, the photos do show that it does really play a bit of a nuisance on, on my building, mm. but also it's not in keeping with the rest of the street. And what it does do is restrict the street. So, generally, in the summer, the kids on the street do play each other on the front. Now we're not allowing our kids to do that because we nearly run a kid over because of this fence. Uh, well, I did put some photos on there um, which show how far my partner has to move off of our drive to be able to see what's coming down the street. And we actually mount over the path and nearly onto the road before we can see what's going on. Um, we also keep a good eye out on the rest of the street because a lot of people are elderly and they do need help. So I'm the first person in the south of the street with the snow, and I've been shopping the whole street of the snow to let everyone get out and do their shopping. So the family can come visit still to help. And um, so we do like to keep an eye on everyone that's around us. And now we can't see the left hand side of the street to, to, to help out there. Um, it really is a struggle, and I do feel that it is way too high for the front garden. There are still other fences on the street, but they are black garden fences. So uh, and they don't cause a nuisance in any way because the road isn't as close to their property as our road are our property is to, to these roads. Um, so that's basically why I'm, I'm here today, because we didn't know this plan was a go ahead until I saw uh, Catherine in there. Literally, I went high a 10 minute window, loading my skip up. Catherine had taken some photos, so I asked what's going on. She said there was no notice on the street. I went up last week, noticed it. Um, and in that week, the street had found out what's happened and they, they made their objections. Um, so it is a nuisance of a fence. It's not, it's, not, it's not a big fence, but it is a big fence, but it's creating quite a lot of trouble on the street. Um, so, you know, whatever you decide. Deeds. Make it go. <laughs> 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 Don't sit on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> would, would a lower fence be accepted? Yeah, absolutely. The like, if, if you can keep it, we can keep it at the rest of the street uh, um, where there's like a three foot fence on the front. Some people have edges which are like three foot. If you look at all of the rest of the street, there's little brick walls, so like two foot. Mm -hmm. I'd say a three foot fence is fine because we can still see over that fence of what's coming. But that, that fence, we can't 
Cost. Yeah, I did drive there this morning and have a look, so I know what you're up against. So. Yeah, if we've lost some of the sun, which comes into the front, you know, and that, that is an issue for us. It's made our life a little bit like you know, we have to have the sun come in the front window now. The main thing is a safety thing. We nearly hit the chop. My, my partner, if I couldn't run in on a scooter or a bike, we'd have been having a different conversation with that, definitely. Why would you say? The new councillors have got questions. Councillor O'Donnell, you are. I'd like to ask you something. Thank you, Chairman. Um, have you fallen out with your neighbours? Because when I saw the pictures, the first thing I thought of was, has there been an argument? Because it, is, it looks just mm -hmm. so big and um, obtrusive. And, uh, it, it's you know. on my side as well, uh, is, what it, is what it is. Um, how was it a fallout? No, his dad um, threatened me about six months ago. Well, actually longer. Um, they have objected to my back door. Um, which was a lawful planning application. If they objected to the front, I probably would have got to it. Um, if you can see from the picture, you can, my dormer is, yeah, that's one. Yes, that's it. If you had objected to the front, I might not have got planning it, but it is within keeping with the street and, and nice. But he objected to the back, and since then he's not spoken to me, but, and literally not spoken to me. I've not spoken to him when it went through, we've not spoken. Um, I don't know what we've done. We're a family, we've got two kids and, and my partner lives there, so we're not noisy or anything like that. Jack might be a little bit of a hand for the time, but that's, that's about it. It's not, um, so I don't, I don't talk to him, so I don't know. I talk to his partner and she seems very nice and, and she's got a local business as well. Um, not myself, but then, no, I don't. I don't. It's never really been chatting since the day's moved in, only unless the last thing he said to me that we spoke about was I was finishing my driveway. And he said, but don't put anything down that side where that fence is. I'm going to put a little retaining wall, two skins wide to keep my vehicle safe so that people can't drive off the footpath. So I didn't finish my driveway so that he could do that. No. And then he put that fence on. Okay, thank you. So, anyone mm -hmm. else? Councillor Harvey. Um, there is a law called the Party Wall Act. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whereby you're looking to a boundary between two properties. You're meant to consult for the other property and let them know what's going on and so on. Yeah. But what you're saying that that didn't happen. No, not at all. Right. You mm -hmm. might have some recourse under that law. Yeah. Well, it will give away the planning because we know we're, we're not the planning authority. We don't make them just fully advanced. Yeah. But there is the Party Wall Act it does exist. And I think there are. Measures within that that people can invoke in a situation like yours, potentially. Yeah, so it was a chain week before yeah. when we bought the property. I bought his deeds so I could check it. And in his deeds, it says that he can't do what's done. Oh, um, oh there's a ghost of all the deeds. Yeah, yeah. Right. so it, it says he can't. Oh I bought, I, I read my deeds, I thought, I think these might be different, so I bought these deeds as well. That's interesting, uh, if he's not on that, I'll have to go out for some reason. That's a forwarded to Kirsty. Yeah, I, I do believe it's in the report. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Right. And other, other ones of the comments I've mentioned are their deeds are the same. Mm. So it says, the transferee shall not become entitled to any right of light or air reason of light. Or air of any workers which would restrict or interfere with any manner of the free use of the adjoining neighbouring property of the transferee for building or any other. The last bit. That says it all. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Um, Councillor Stutchby. Um, I'm going to comment on the planning, but those sort of informations um, are correct legal information. Um, it could be, can I sit on planning as we won't comment on the application? But you may wish to, if you are making any comments, you need to make sure that information is available to the officer who's determined it. Yeah, um, because um, made a very comment on the website. you have, I mean, I haven't seen it, I apologise, but you, you need to make sure that information because you, whether it will go under delegated powers or go to committee, we don't know nowadays. But um, but um, I won't comment on your application, but I think I've advised you to make sure that it's, it's, it's information is available. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've referenced I've referenced that um, that statement in in my objection. So hopefully, if you do need the copy, I can email over a copy of the. We we won't come here. Okay. You need to make sure that the planning officer is. Who's designated to do that application is aware of that because right. they can't so actually. That's Council. 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 Because they are the, they're the. Though I sit here, I don't comment on planning applications here for other reasons. But um, but um, but you do need to make sure that the planning officer is aware of those matters because they are legal matters, and yeah. and and they may. Be a determining factor in the way they look at something. I don't know. I'm not the planning officer. But I have heard that type of thing come up in meetings down in in the um, Aylesbury over there. So um, we have contacted Aylesbury Vale um, and Highways, and we're not with that. Yeah, and no one's responded as of yet. And I'm going to send a copy of the deed as well. Mr. Council, Yeah, please, Council. Councillor Donoghue. So this is on your land. Uh, Do you that's have to Sylvia's. take that? Can you just not take that down? That's, no, that's Sylvia's, that is. That's next door. So mine, that's the right hand side. My property is 21, that's 25, and, and Dan's is 23. Mm. So the right hand side, we're looking at that house there, is Sylvia's. I have got a planning officer. So, so is that, Mr. Castanier? Yeah. Is that yours? This is my house. Door, no. This okay. is Dan's house. Okay. And that's Sylvia's house. Okay. All right. So yeah. this is your. But that's the fence that he's put up. Okay. And he's, he's put it on, on his side, on, right on the uh. right just next to the park, because there is a bunch of walls we've got to separate them. You yeah. have put it in the right place. There is a photo there with Kirsty's car where, where she um how far she's got to drive across the path. Mm. Of course, you can see that. Um, Mr. Yeah, Toby, just, just contact, I won't say I've got officer's no, that, name. That is what he's put on the website for Ms. Oh, so you've told him? Yeah, I've put yeah. that off the website. Okay, so, yeah. It's all there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Toby, I'm going to say, what will I do the committee's agreement? We will bring that item forward once we've done the housekeeping. So. You're welcome to stay for I'll, I'll leave you guys to it. Okay, right. Uh, right. <laughs> you can rush home and watch it. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you very much for coming and telling us about it. And I, I know that you and Kathleen have had a good discussion on site. So thank, yeah. thank you for that. And, um, and all, all, the, all your other photographs are available to the show members yeah. on the big screen. Okay. Thank you. 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 Right. No other members of the public. Um, so, moving on with the meeting item one apologies for absence. There isn't any apologies for absence. The full house. <laughs> um, item two declarations of interest. Robin, your the usual declaration yeah. of interest that I will comment on planning case in case by any misfortune we actually have a planning meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the benefit of members of the public who might be watching, um, Robin is obviously a shy councillor, so he has a, a dual role on, on the and local planning authority committee and also here at Buckingham Town Council. Don't know others? No. Thank you. Uh, minutes of the last meeting, which was held on the 7th of March. Um, they have already been received at the full council. Yeah. Are we agreed? Yeah. Those can be yeah. signed. Thank you very much. Um, item four, Buckingham neighbourhood plan, Vanderbilt's brief plan, Buckinghamshire local plan. There are notes attached from the Buckingham neighbourhood plan working group, which met on the 23rd of March. Councillor Stashby. Can I just advise that we, um, that my view is that as you're conducting the neighbourhood plan, and as we, um, saying you say we, um, we look at um, and we contact highways and um, to make sure that they're aware of the fact that we're reviewing the neighbourhood plan, um, and we ask highways um, for any to any that what their plans are um, in the area and why we're drafting the plan because if they do something radical. That we are not aware of while we're drafting a plan, it will cost us money and 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 we would have to redraft it. So I think we should my voice is that we contact highways and ask them um 
for any long-term plans that they've got regarding highways, which may impinge on a local plan. Mm -hmm. I think that's a reasonable question for us to ask. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Members in agreement with that? Yeah, Councillor Harvey. Just a quickie, I thought I'd give my apologies, but I can't find the record of it. In that case, I'm sure that you did, my apologies. Mm. I wrote the note to the record. Right. Right. I've got it's my apologies. I've got my apologies there, John, but I've got the record where I actually made them. So. I had a flash in my head. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much for that, Robin. That's noted. So, item number five then action reports. Um, item five one to re receive those on the attached list. There are some verbal updates. Um, Trees, we have a meeting later. Um, town clerks are going to report on the progress. We can leave that perhaps until we do the tree item. We're happy. Um, highways response that's on the agenda as well. Warm up drive is on the agenda. Oddfellows Hall, um, Councillor Stashbury is forwarded to for action. Robin, anything to report on that? Well, only that I understand Oddfellows Hall. Unfortunately, has been granted um, planning, and um, which means that we are in a situation where um, the officer has done it under delegated powers, and all the points which were raised by well-meaning people have been um, uh, totally um, disregarded, and it's been given planning consent, which leaves the poor householder with the situation where. Um, I understand things aren't going as well as they should be without saying what's happened. And um, so that's something which is quite concerning. Um, I'm not sure um, at this point whether they've even notified the local members being, because uh, it's in uh, the Warren, um, Howard and Aidy, so I'm not even sure whether they've notified. Them. If they haven't notified them, that's really bad. Um, and because it was contentious, and was um, um, was bad. So I, I'm on that. On, on the other stuff on the action list, some of it's on the agenda. So I can yeah, um, Catherine will give us an update. We have more information. To <laughs> yeah, the approval is of the variation to the original approval to move the skylights down in the roof. Now they are therefore directly opposite the neighbour's bedroom. Um, but also somewhat unnerving, she sent me a photograph this afternoon. Taken from her kitchen window of a gentleman preparing to shower after work. Oh, 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 yes. Oh. Um, so she's not pleased. Um, but they have put in amended plans which show that they're going to raise the windows a whole four inches further up the roof. Wow. Mm. As, as I've got a very nice photograph in my file for the application that she took from her bedroom window of the gentleman actually making the hole to make the skylight. Um, and it's on directly on the same level. Um, but that's, that's it. Robin? Um, oh, I, have, I have forwarded the um, approval notice to Councillor Wong because he had called it in. Yeah. And I don't know whether they bother to tell their own members whether happen, so I thought I would. I'm sure he'll be really pleased when he receives that email if he hasn't been told. Well, this, of course, will be, it came too late for this agenda, so it will be reported to the next meeting, although it's on the action list, uh, but we'll give a full more mm -hmm. at the next meeting. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, we've got action reports, I see. Um, I give you a verbal update on the archaeology. Oh. Uh, uh, we yeah. We're still still on the actual list. Okay, right then. Okay, anything else on action list? Yes. Sorry, Councillor Harvey. Um, the care home access. Yep. Since we last met, um, a uh, barrier, not barrier, curb has been put down. So as you walk down the path through the trees, there are now three possible exits from that path. There was the temporary one that was put in when they were doing all the building work. But I've been famous that it goes next to the recycling bins. There's the original one, which 
stop short of the one you used to, which now goes straight into the kind of in in and out of the actual care home, but doesn't go anywhere else beyond that. But it seems to suggest you walk into the car parking spaces opposite. And then there's this curve which sort of guides you to walk 90 degrees into the main entrance to the car park, um, you know, the, the standard car park. But again, it doesn't take you anywhere at that point either. I think it's enormously confusing. I don't think it's very accessible for people with disabilities. Um, and I'm just, I'm very concerned that it's going to be left like that without any apparent guidance for pedestrians so that they can cross that corner safely and the curve is probably now adding an extra hazard for people to people with sight problems that they might then trip over who's planning this who's designing this where is the plan are they just making it up as they go along i'm very concerned about this in fact the as you can see on the action it does say that this will be reviewed after the care home is open i'm aware they've had an open day this weekend but it's still a work in progress as we will seen tonight it is now open are they actually testifying? Well, friendly well, work for them. Is they open now? We have the residents work on moving in on Wednesday. There is still work going on on sites. There's still work going on on the apartments. Um, they're nowhere near finished. Um, so I can't comment on um, the road layout or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm there to cook meals. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't. Well, she didn't, well, she didn't know you were going to raise it, did she? No, no, I'm just saying. Just saying. No, no, I just asked if it was open. I've had to previously declared an interest. So that, that's, that was what we agreed as a, as a committee that we would, would review it after the care home is open. Um, right. So maybe just to wait, wait for the next week. It's not open. As, as, no, as far as, as I can see, the care that John is referring to. Is protecting um, people using the um, um, ticket machine, which is now back in, back in availability again, which it wasn't doing much of the building works. Mm. So there's there's a bit of a path, and then there's a raised curve. So um, as I can see it, um, D marks that that bit is pavement, and and the, the um, yeah, not very right. uh, yeah. mm. Thank you for that information, Councillor so, uh, yeah. I, I think it's reasonable to ask questions of detail um, as it's progressing. I think that, that the car park obviously was changing its um, operation at different points to give people access to the car park. It's changing fees. I think it, it, what we can do is just ask... Um, and probably take it away and just ask what what the long term plans to, on the permanent entrances. Mm. I think the other thing that we were going to do is, which I think for council had agreed or environment had agreed or we had agreed, um, that we were going to review it when it's open, finished, and in progress, so that we could actually see how it all worked. That's and said, yeah, but but I think the detail of you know will they that what the one that comes out behind the ticket machines. Will that stay be permanent, temporary? I think that sort of thing might be something worth asking, but mm. I, I think it will probably in the next week revert back to what it's going to be, and then we'll be reviewing what it is rather than what it was. Um, mm. So, um, but uh, I did go in there. Um, I think it's beyond my pocket. I don't think I'll be moving in next week. Um, <laughs> although the food was very nice, I did eat a lot of it. Um, um, but I won't be moving in next week. So, um, thank you, Robin. <laughs> Right, um, anything else on that? Okay, um, 19 Bridge Street decision to receive and discuss the reply. It's there uh, under Appendix C. You will recall we've expressed concern the highways appeared not to have taken account of all the um, road, road features around the entrance to the application for dry cleaners and takeaway. There has been that reply back from Joe Thornton, who's the um, highways manager. Buckinghamshire Council, um, and they just basically say, well, we were just following our guidelines and tick boxes. And um, Catherine, any comment on that as you drafted the original letter? 
Nothing that we'll say, really. I mean, if they go and buy her guidelines, we'll just have to be very careful in the future. Yeah, she did finish off saying that, you know, we're still obviously as a consultant entitled to raise any problems we think there are. And on this one, we haven't agreed, but of course it was refused anyway. Um, well, it may or may not be the subject of me. TPC. Yeah. <laughs> Off this right, thank you. Um, Item 5.3, West End Farm Archaeology, um, to receive a verbal report from Council's touch print on. Yeah, um, we, I think we've all been following this up for quite a number of years now. Um, what I have had uh, a response from the officers, I think it was last week, um, saying that they are now in a, in a much more permanent position where they're um, looking at getting the... Um, the position where they're talking about getting the costs for pursuing the archaeology mm. and and moving it forward. I think that's um, about reading the email that I've got in front of me and that, that it was more positive than we've been for a long time and they are in discussions with um, the company and are going back to discussions with the other company and of course within all that there are some legal questions but I think that I can say fairly that Myself and archaeology, um, Catherine has always, um, as ever, got it here. Um, um, uh, so basically, network, I think it's network archaeology, and they talk to them, uh, and they look like they're going to be in a position to um, get some of the information out of it yeah. um, for the archaeology. So I hope the next time we come back, it will be about, I've, I've asked for an update, and when we will report, future report will be made public. Now we have been following this up, I think, for three years. Mm -hmm. um, and and to be fair, I think it got lost within the changeovers of the council mm -hmm. and the fact that they decided not to pursue their application. Mm -hmm. But it looks like after going to cabinet, which we asked, what one was asked to do, that things are now actually moving forward. So I'm hoping that that will be the thing. We might actually one day find out if it, you know the age of the burials, mm -hmm. um, the nature of them uh, uh, and what time frame they fit in in Buckingham's history. Um, so I think it would be, it, I've got the um, officer's name here, it, it, the, we've been off the board committee, if you, if you allow um, through the clerk to write back to the officer the banker for what work she's done on it, because quite often officers work really silently in the background and don't get appreciation. And that, that I've informed you and that we're, and a note of, what it is can be circulated to the members of the email so you're aware of it and i ask that we write to them and thank them for their time because it's not easy it's legal difficulties and um and and they have received more than their fair weight of emails from me over the past three years <laughs> and um and for that they need all the thanks they can possibly <laughs> get um, anyone who's read one of my emails um, <laughs> Yeah, no for you. Um, yeah, thank you, Robin. Um, if I just let members know, Robin has been keeping me in the email train throughout, so uh, thank you for that. So we're aware of what's going on. Ah, hopefully, we'll get somewhere soon. Yeah. Um, item 5 4 to receive from information the highway obligations pages from the Walnut Drive Maids of Morton Section 106 agreement. Um, it's attached there, and as you can see, it's not a very particularly attractive document. It's got number of handwritten and signature uh, changes to it, which I, I find quite extraordinary. Yeah. For a development of this size that somebody couldn't actually be bothered to just retype the relevant clauses. Um, the best part of it is, of course, they have moved the uh, pedestrian crossing further down Stratford Road outside Buckingham Athletic. Um, they still haven't got the cross-hatched keep clear markings Junction right. They say it's to assist bu buses exiting the high street. It's not. It's to assist buses joining the high street from the bus station. But uh, I think having got to this point, probably just need to, <laughs> to let it apply. <laughs> Anyone any comments on that, Carolyn? Um, no, the action group are not expressed here, reviewing it all and um, considering judicial review. Yeah, it was all very much sprung on everyone, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been away, so I'm actually totally up to speed. Councillor Harvey? Do we know 
um, because there was this question mark about whether the Shire councillors could call it in yes, they can. or not. It wasn't called in, but the decision has been taken. Was it not called in because it wasn't constitutional for the Shire councillors to call it in, or were there other reasons do we know? The business manager and chair consulted together and decided that it didn't need to be called in. So that's the way it is down there. <laughs> well. I mean, apart from that one, we haven't actually been to a committee meeting for a year. Mm. Clara, again. I was just going to add to that to say that um, the question was posed to uh, a legal advisor uh, at the ch at Chambers about this particular aspect of calling it in and whether it was uh, in line with the Constitution or not. And it does appear that, like all legal jargon things, um, you can interpret things one way or the other, and that the council was probably um, interpreting it in a way that would be considered correct because it had been determined. But um, it was a new point, and, and the legal advisor took two letters to make that point. Thank you. Robin? Yeah, the, the application had a very long run into its determination. Actually, I think started um, its journey with the district council, um, and it it went, went through the shadow authority into the year of, of no elections with the Buckinghamshire council. Um, in all those times, the constitution for the um, the um, Buckinghamshire Council went to one meeting, which was an extraordinary meeting of the Shadow Authority. Um, and there was only one person asked any questions on the constitution at all, and you were looking at him. Um, no other councillor at that meeting. It was a webcast available, asked any questions of the constitution whatsoever, and there was 204 of them at the time. And, um, and so the constitution was what I call a... Uh, in my view, was a cut and paste constitution from four or five authorities. I think the constitution needs to evolve. I am really concerned that that you have a constitution with statutory planning committee, which leaves the chairman and the um, business manager to be so um, decisive in in a decision. Because yeah. it rather means that the planning committee is only allowed to meet after some more important people have decided whether they're able to meet, which I don't think it will. This is one um, really testing thing for Buckingham. And the thing that we have to consider, and this is something which needs to be said, there was, there was targets to hit on this politically and, and politically, and I will be political in this because it is political. The first target was when these matters were going through because it's linked with the Vale plan. The Vale plan went through the cabinet. There was an opportunity there to challenge it because the Vale plan gives it legal weight. And that's what they used to determine it in the first place. So that wasn't challenged. And then the other points, it could have been challenged again um, at council. Um, the Buckinghamshire um, council agreed the Vale plan. Very few people spoke um, um, about it. Um, I did. Um, I said a few words about what I thought where it was. It's a Republic record. And they were polite, but meaningful. Um, so we missed that. And then we'd call it in, which we could have suggested that if we better understood the situation on the application and it had come to here, because it didn't come to here, did it? it? It went quite rightly to Mays Morton Parish Council. We would have, because we were already getting lined up to call things in. I'm not 100% sure the local members were fully aware that the application was processing through um, and it didn't get an early call in. It was called in on this other section that, that three members can call an application in, as, as Caroline says, that at that point, it, they deemed that it wasn't um, substantive. But I do think we need to stand up by our beds and be really careful going this, because of course, one day there'll be an application in South Bucks as contentious as this is. And I could imagine then all wheels will come off all barriers 
and um, and it will get the attention it jolly well deserves. What I'm worried about is that this application is in North Buckinghamshire, and the the nature of a strategic planning committee is that um, it's made up of the whole Buckinghamshire. And I did question when this was going through, would it come to the local planning committee? Because it says in the in the constitution that anything, I think it's something can come to the um, local planning committee, but it was deemed to go to the strategic planning committee, which meant the decision for this all the way along has been taken through the strategic planning committee, where up to 400 houses can go to the local area planning committee. I say this because we will be determining an application, which I have called in um, to committee, so we can do this all again um, for the Mays Morton Road, which because the chairman and, and the chairman at the time, um, we, we called that in. So we're going to go through this argument again, but we have to live and learn, and, and any money spent on fighting the council will be defended, I expect, vigorously, um, because that's what they will do, because they have to defend themselves against the um, developer, I expect. So we do have to live and learn and so start marking down in our pens what doing. And I think it does beg a belief that we do need to, someone who's got a legal brain, which isn't mine, needs to look at that constitution and compare it to other similar authorities, whether such power is left in such individuals' hands to determine whether an application should go to committee and whether that it's whether's a calling. Because that worries me, because I wouldn't feel comfortable if I was the chair of anything, having that much power placed upon myself to determine something when you can easily be influenced by the advanced knowledge of an officer. I'm sorry if that's very long, but it, it is a very serious issue. And we do need to be minded to this because this is something Thank you, Robin, we're going to have to go. Minutes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can't start on with you. Thank you. Um, it's not really about all that drive. It's just a, a discussion that we're having now about um, the business manager and the chairman um, determining applications. We have already been over this when when we first got a look at the constitution. And I know there's some new members on the table now, but this the this was our argument at the time um that you know it's going to come down to a few people rather than um a group that was that's been elected um to make decisions that could affect a lot of people yeah, so um, we have already had this exactly what we forecast yeah, yeah. thank you very much um that's the harmony um can't have, i'm having difficulty hearing any of the masks i'm sorry but okay yeah thank you I just want to say I told you so, because when I blogged about this a couple of years ago, I was roundly criticised for being too pessimistic. Those read out the words I put. I said, currently, any one of the local UBC councillors can call this in. A new arrangement will mean that only one councillor, the chair of the local planning committee, has that decision um, to, to consider. Everything has to be funneled through them, as the other local UBC councillors will have had their democratic wings severely clipped. Moreover, the chief planning officer is to be given the prime decision-making role in deciding whether a planning application is to be called in or not. This means that the council will no longer be a member led when it comes to local planning decisions. Is this democracy? I wrote that a year and a half ago, and it's come true. That's not what it is. Cassa Davis, are you waiting to speak? No. Anyone I else? I was just going to say it's, it's setting um, a dreadful precedent, really, mm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 thank you. Just a bit. Right, um, we can move on to planning applications. We'll just note for members of information the next Buckinghamshire Council North Buckinghamshire Planning Area Committee meetings was this Wednesday, April the 6th, and on May the 4th. Uh, sure Council Statutory sits on strategic sites committees, Thursdays, 21st of April and 12th of May. Nothing on those. But that's as far as we know. Um, yeah, to talk, maybe have it to agenda for 21st of April. We might. Right. Get one soon, but it's not there. Thank you, Catherine. Um, Catherine's gone through all the planning applications and made comments on them. You've all seen those, I'm sure. We'll start with the first one, um, which is 23 Deerfield Close. It's on the Badgers Estate. Um, it was it has been had the notices put up on the 16th of March. There was a slight amendment to it on roof lights, but nothing affects it hugely. It's one neighbour objection that the neighbour who lives behind it um, has objected to the overbearing size of the 
extension, his loss of privacy, the risk of flooding um, if they put a, a patio in rather than keep this, this is what will be a very small lawn. And he's also noted that he's got a tree that could possibly fall onto this extension, even though they ticked, there were no trees nearby the extension. Um, anyone would like to speak on this? Karen. Yes, um, well, the society did think this is overdevelopment, and I think the um, loss of immunity to neighbours is quite considerable, given the nature of the terrace itself. Uh, and I noted the neighbour's objection from the back of you as well. I gather it's slightly raised, um, the airfield closed from Kingfisher, and uh, flooding is, uh, is a potential hazard, certainly. Thank you. Any other members like to speak on it? We've heard what the Buckingham Society said. If people are in agreement with that, then perhaps we should uh, object to it on, on those grounds. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. over to Um Does that object to calling? We're going to hold fire and. Yeah, we'd object first. Right, so all those in favour of objecting? That's that's unanimous. Keep Robin's well, apart from yeah, Robin abstaining. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, item two: Ring Road Garage up on the Gorkot Road roundabout. Um, this is just a replacement of um, some signs. Highways has no objection provided they are non-illuminated and non-reflective. Um, no Tim Catherine's pictures. Everyone happy with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, item three, right, we have Mr. Tuttle being earlier talking about 23 Woodlands Crescent, which is just off Morton Road. For those of you who don't know it, there are, as of uh, this afternoon, 13 objections, all from neighbours in Woodlands Crescent. Um, They're all complaining much of the same thing, that it's uh, dis dispensing, it's spoiling the street scene, it's cutting out natural light for some of the immediate neighbours, and there's a danger to pedestrians and particularly to children, as this is a Group to um, Buckingham Primary School. Yeah. Councillor Donahue. Yeah, more than happy to uh, recommend that we oppose this one. Thank you. A second of that. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Did anyone else wish to speak on it? So, for all those reasons, yeah. um, we oppose it. Catherine's got the there. Councillor Harvey, sorry. Just going what is the planning reason or reasons that we're objecting to it on? Street scene. Um, vision splash. in the least, it's not allowed. Lots of, lots of really safe. Yeah, okay. lots of natural light, safety. Danger, safety. danger to safety. and it's not allowed in the least. Yeah. 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 I can just make the point that we did actually raise an enforcement on this, I think, in 2018 when they changed the, the large front window to two small ones, and although we reported it, nothing was ever done. But, uh, mm. So, thank you. Okay, really good. Um, item four then, which is 12 Bottom Close. This is in Linden Village. Um, there's no yellow notice for this yet. It's a householder application for two-storey side extension above an existing garage, and conversion of the garage into habitable accommodation. It is a four-bedroom house. It's, we'll keep it at four bedrooms. Uh, Catherine, in her notes, pointed out that um, they will be losing a garage, probably one that they couldn't use anyway. Um, so, possibility that they might park on, want to change one, one of the grass areas to parking. But there is certainly parking for two cars there at the moment. Karen? Yes, I think we would just say that um, I think it's quite correct to point out that the, the lawn probably will go for an extra parking space. Um, and it would be a, a loss of immunity, I think, both to that particular property, but also the street itself. And, it's probably impossible to make any sort of condition, but perhaps can we suggest that uh, any further works to the garden should be permeable surface? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can yeah. that, okay. yeah. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah, Cast yeah. on. And the usual grey water resort yeah. thing, and yeah. solar panels to yeah. add to the. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and the car charging, electric car charging point as well. Yeah. 
Do you think DCC should be standard? No, not really. You too, yeah. Any further offers? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. You're all, all happy with that, yes? Yeah. Thank you. Right. Um, this is 12 to 13 Market Hill Revisited. We've had a number of applications over the years for this, um, all of which to date have been refused. Um, this is to convert the <coughs> floors above M Co into eight dwellings, flats. Um, first part of the application is external alterations to form new doors and windows to the front and the side of the rear elevations. Uh, so M and Co giving up, uh, looking at the front of it, the, the, the extreme left-hand side of, of the shop. Is everyone happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, there's no problems with um, heritage. They, they've said they put certain conditions on. So the main part is a determination as to whether prior approval is required in respect to transport and highway impact noise contamination with flooding and locational consideration, the change of use of upper floors from retail storage. Um, this is a COUFN, which is a government initiative, but town centre empty properties should be, uh, could be used for housing. Uh, the exception on that appears to be except in conservation areas. Um, and I'm sure Buckingham Society will have a view on that. Just to say highways have got no objection to it, but environmental health note, it's close proximity to the Buckingham Inn next door and the risk of noise and smell for rooms number one and two. Um, Councillor Ralph, um, Certainly there's a question about rubbish bins or pet bags or whatever. And, um, and also I think I'm right in saying, um, where do you put the bicycles? Because they talk blandly about bicycle storage, but it would appear to virtually stick it under your bed as far as I can see. Um, so we need to perhaps explore that in a bit more detail. Thank you. Karen? Yes, I think just following up on Councillor Ralph's comments, um, there's simply really not enough information. We have no objection to the principle of residential development above retail premises. Um, but the space for refuge has already been mentioned. But the, the cycle rack, which I noticed the highways officer says there should be a cycle space for each flat that's not been shown. Um, you can't possibly have it in the flat up yeah, the yeah. narrow stairs. And I was rather astonished to see from the tick box um, report that they have to do that they don't seem to think a fire is, is relevant because it's below 18 metres. Uh, I mean, this astonishes me in particular, but I'm sure this yeah. <laughs> also picked this up. Um, that there just isn't enough information on these very critical factors when you have people living closely together mm -hmm. in close quarters um, and kitchens producing potential fires. It's, it's really quite the, the, the 18 metres is the figure the government has set post Grenfell. Yes. So that's obviously the magic number. I see that's the magic number. Mm -hmm. yes. When we have raised these issues before, we have been told by local planning authority that these are a matter for building regulations that's yeah. that's how they'd be dealt with mm -hmm. to keep yeah. our nose out of it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, i think as, as a town we should be really concerned about it and raise the point that it needs to be yeah. yeah catherine's also made a number of points about the natural lighting inside the building um, there are some voids um, mm. it looks like a couple of bedrooms may not have any windows at all, natural lighting. Um, are we, you know, part of our Buckingham neighbourhood plan is that people should have a good quality of light wherever they live. Yeah. yeah. That's the hardy. Well, it isn't just about quality of light, it's about if you don't have any windows, then you're going to be turning the lights off. And then you're going to be burning out more cars. Yeah. You do that. So, you know, we, we, we objected to the development on the build base, you know, that, that held down there because of, we said that they didn't want enough light coming in with being restricted. I think the same thing should apply here. And I, I think, frankly, the, the, if the plans of this are limited, I'm not sure we should take a view on it at all. We could say we're very unhappy um, with the lack of light. I'm not sure about the grounds. I do like the mix of the space. There are at least some smaller properties for people 
starting out or just from the middle of one bed back, back and so on. Glad there is that mix, which there hasn't been before. But I think the lack of light is serious. The lack of information, even more so. But of course, we can um, agree that uh, we don't have enough information and our, our, our script to be deferred until we have that information. We can take mm -hmm. a, yeah. a deal on that rather, rather yeah. than just refuse it or, or okay. prove it tonight. Let's do that. Yeah. Councillor could, could we object until we receive uh, further information, which we will then reconsider? Would that, that be a slightly stronger? Yes, that is stronger. And if, if the officer is minded to refuse, then we should be delighted. And if they're not, then do we have more information? Yeah. yeah, we've done that before. Yeah. 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 Is everyone happy with that? Yeah. So you're proposing yeah. that, Councillor Ralph? Pardon me? You're proposing. No. Yes, I do. If we could have just have a second. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's uh, Lisa. All those in favour? Because it's refusal. Yeah, that's uh, unanimous. Thank you. Apart from sorry, <laughs> I'm not I'm not overlooking your orders. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. It, it gives you all more chance to speak if I don't. Uh, <laughs> um, item number seven is 90 Morton Road. Householder application for part two, part single story side and rear extensions. <laughs> the only thing that we've noted is the roof is not subservient, but it is rather a quirky roof. In any case, um, I wonder if the Buckingham Society might have a view on this. Well, I wasn't at the meeting, but perhaps Councillor Ralph would like to just say, I, I read mean, the, the summary, because <laughs> um, aesthetically unattractive. Yes, yes, I know yeah. that's a really a material reason. Um, uh, I look quite closely at it myself and I didn't see any particular. I think I think that may even be my phrase, which is lovely to hear back. But, um, <laughs> uh, ne 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 but nevertheless, it's quite a fanciful design. Um, but I, I can't really see a planning reason why not. Um, yeah. and, and in its location, I can't could be reasonable about these things. Is everyone happy to go with that, yeah. Carmen? I would just yeah. note that the the roof line. And I think Catherine has already pointed that out too, not subsidiary. Mm -hmm. um, and the two properties um, mirror each other rather nicely from the sort of 1930s style. So it, it just alters the street scene. I think not significantly, but it, it is worth just noting that there will be um, no longer some sort of matching appearance from the front. Thank you. Councillor Ralph, I think Councillor Davis. I, I, I certainly concur with all that, but I would draw everybody's attention to the photograph of the front elevation of the site generally. And there is a very large and overbearing um, mismatch on the other side of the house. So yeah. it, it shoots our box a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 So that, was, that was the point I was going to the make same, yeah. um, with, with the dormer windows and a um, really quite huge extension that's been um, put on the, what, what it looks like. Um, uh, the twin or the triplet of, of the houses. So, basically, no objections. Then. No, no, no. Thank you very much. Right, we move on to the big one, item eight, um, west of Morton Road, which, as you know, we was deferred to delegate to tonight's meeting from the council. Um, this was first validated in March 2020. What we've got is amended plans tonight. <clears throat> a number of changes to Catherine. Um... That is just this amendment. <laughs> That's not the original application. <laughs> Creep, which I like to call it. <laughs> right. Could I just hopefully save some time? I have to put what Catherine's told us into order. Thank you, Catherine, for your comprehensive report. You all know the history of this 130 houses, which are the third and final part of the uh, 410 dwelling Morton Road development, refused by the Secretary of State in 2017, has been outside the housing development envelope of the Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan. That's since been reinserted under the new VARP, so we can no longer object to the overall plan. It doesn't mean we can't comment on parts of it with which we disagree. It still falls within our town boundary, so BMP policies are still valid. We should note, though, that the developer has included 35% affordable housing 
content in line with our policy, not the 25% of the new valve. Principle among potential objections is the developer's continuing failure to acknowledge the Buckingham design guidelines, which I know the Buckingham Society will raise tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, Roger Newell is one of those commenters on the uh, portal. Other issues are the travel plan, which is unchanged despite the cancellation of many bus routes since 2018, um, and the approval of the nearby 130 house development, 170 house development rather, at Walnut Drive, Maids Morton. Here, Buckinghamshire Council has managed to contradict itself, and first of all, suggesting that eastbound traffic from Maids Morton 3 can use College Farm Road to reach the A421, but at the same time, stating that access via College Farm Road will be restricted under part of the agreement on the Walnut Drive. It also calls for a cycleway down the A413 into Buckingham Town Centre, believing, as Catherine reminded us, that the town has a gentle topography. <laughs> State roads are block paved and many of them have surfaces shared between traffic and pedestrians, both of which go against Buckingham neighbourhood plan policies and our design guidelines. Affordable housing has no garages, which goes against good planning practice of tenure of blindness. And parking is distant from some of the dwellings served. Our overall increase, sorry, our requested increase over 10 parking spaces and toilet and shower facilities for the rugby pitch has been ignored. Waste bins are another issue. Buckinghamshire recycling and waste demanding storage space for four weedy bins and a food caddy for each dwelling and setting a maximum distance which householders should have to wheel them at 25 metres. Both the Buckingham Deputy Town Clerk and Buckinghamshire Parks and Recreation have questioned the design and layout of the BMX pump track. Tamman's Valley Police has concerns about lack of surveillance and parking. The Gardens Trust is asking for a wireframe outline to be added to the view from Stowe before it gives its consent, bearing in mind the high pitch roofs in this amended application. And then finally, there's the history of flooding on the site, which will be partly mitigated by detention basins, but the SARS officer asks that a whole life maintenance and management plan for the surface water drainage system is secured by a section 106 planning agreement. The use of a planning obligation as opposed to a planning condition would help safeguard the maintenance and management of these features over the lifetime of the development. Now, given that it's apparent that Section 106 contributions can still be called for, then I would suggest that we, the Buckingham Town Council, ask for a Section 106 contribution towards local health provisions, something we're being banging on about now, to mitigate for the around 500 new patients that the Sperling will bring to Buckingham, mm -hmm. subject to required proof being provided by the Clinical Commissioning Group. The National Planning Policy Framework is very clear that Section 106 agreements should be agreements between a developer and a local planning authority about measures that the developer must take to reduce their impact on the community. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry to go on a bit, but that's no, no, no. more or less in case yeah. what Catherine had mm. picked up and yeah. the rest of us and from our meeting yeah. this afternoon. Councillor Harvey, again, if you could just drop your mask sure. down when, when talking. Yes. Okay, to that list, I would add, um, we need to ensure there's adequate provision of post boxes. Which is an issue on the Tindra and Road, I understand. And Kat and I have been talking about that. And there are regulations about post boxes being within half a mile of a letterbox. Um, so we need to kind of press that. Uh, street lighting, we need to ensure there's adequate street, street lighting. Um, for people, particularly in the park area, I think, and obviously some of it's going to be uh, put over to a sports pitch. Does it have to be rugby? What about hockey? That's what I have to say about that. Um, there's the issue of connectivity, the old Fawley chestnut that we had um, on Lace Hill, uh, when they didn't put in broadband connections, we need to make sure that's going into this. Um, we need to make sure that any provisions that are about mitigating the impact, like the roundabout, the inventory road that Robin successfully campaigned for, are put in in time, not just at the end of the, of the development. Um, with regards to time of emergency, then obviously we would encourage solar panels on all the houses, uh, grey water recycling on all the houses, and um, electric vehicle points on all the houses, at least as options for people who are buying them, so that they will be encouraged to think about it for an extra you know, few quid to install an electric vehicle power point on a 
house that you're about to move into, even though you may not yet have an electric vehicle, would be a good thing to do. Um, and what we've mentioned about the pub track, and with regards to the mix of housing, there is no one bed um, properties being put into the site. That's an oversight that needs to be rectified. There needs to be a good proportion of one bed properties as well as two plus bed properties as well. Yeah, thank you. There is one bungalow we noted, but only one. Yeah, there's, there's, not, one bedroom. there's not one bedroom. There's no one bed. Carry. I think there are one beds in the maisonettes actually. On the mix, I couldn't say a lot. Um, I'm sure there wasn't a lot. Two or three one beds in the maisonette, but maybe maybe I'm not. Yes, one bed maisonette. But um, absolutely echo your summary, uh, Chairman, and um, Councillor Harvey's points about post boxes, lighting, and solar. But the lighting issue also brings to mind the um, points made by the Garden Trust on the effect mm -hmm. of landscape, because those pictures will be lit at night, probably. Um, and no amount of trees in winter is going to hide the fact that there is lighting, casting its um, pollution, I would go as far as to say, over the open countryside beyond it. Um, the applicant has not made any mention of the fact that, regardless of the stone of the landscape, there is actually a public right away that runs alongside close to it, which would be um, very much affected by it. Can you imagine the noise when you're riding the horse? You have gone go on about my riding on public um, bridleways where they're adjacent to uh, developments like this. There is always noise and it's really relatively dangerous. Um, and uh, the rest of our comments really refer to the design, which I think uh, Roger has pointed out in a letter. But in particular, I'm horrified to see that all the doors are black. They all have the same diamond motif on the front. And um, all the barge boards and so forth are white. Sorry, the doors are black. When I say white, the barge boards are white. There's a sea of bricks. There's not a, an attempt to introduce, or a bit of render. There's not an attempt to introduce some of the other materials that we see in Buckingham. There really has been no reference to the design guidelines or the distinctiveness of Buckingham, whether they look at guidelines or not. It, it, this is a very badly designed development in our view. The houses are ubiquitous, there is really very little variation, and there certainly should be chimneys on all the houses that face the outside. I think it's quite noticeable when you come down from Padbury. You look at the skyline where this hill is, and the chimneys would have made such a difference to the visual appearance. And from the, the uh, boundary with, with the open landscape overlooking towards Stowe, there should be chimneys on every single house. Thank you. That's a wrap. Could I just add to what Caroline just said? But they're talking about concrete tiles as opposed to you know the vernacular for packing on them. And if, if uh, people are looking out over that, it's extremely unattractive with or in all other respects. Um, I mean, if we can just add that in, I mean, it should be part of the package along with chimneys and so on and so forth. In fact, I think Roger yeah, mentioned that. Yeah. Mm. And the colour of the bricks. Mm. Mm. That's the Davis. Um, just, just um, as a, um, points of Councillor Harvey's um, thing about the one bedroom, it does say uh, six one bedroom flats yeah, um, and, 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 <clears throat> in the zone. Right, yeah. Um, Councillor I'm not going to comment on the application, but um, I first corresponded on this application on the 26th of the 8th, 2020. Um, I also corresponded on November 20, um, 21. Um, I've recently corresponded on the application and the words which um, rather paraphrases our conversation and support um, Councillor Harvey's comments earlier. Um, I haven't yet determined whether this application um, goes to committee or whether it's going to be done under delegated powers. And, and I think that I said earlier that we may be discussing that again. Um, so I, whatever um decision you make 
I can't comment on in case by any chance it actually does come to the planning committee. But I would advise that you ask similar questions about is this going to be done under the constitution because it's got history. Everybody around this table um, knows history or discussed it previously. So I hope that you will consider asking um, um, uh, uh, whether this is going to go to committee or not, because if this wasn't, that would be two major applications in Buckingham, which have been determined through the constitution, um, challenging um, the views. And all the views have been said in various committees about it, but that's what I was saying. I, I, just to let you know that I called it in and that's and I followed it up as one did. And I think I copied the chairman and, and the planning clerk into that correspondence, which if you wish to read, you can. Um, but um, I'm still waiting to admit tonight before doing anything else, basically. Thank you, Robert. So, anyone else want to speak? Maybe you can to try it. Thank you. Uh, I feel sorry for the uh, people in the established uh, um, housing estate because you're going to have another 130 cars coming out. And those roads are, they may be of the right requirement these days, but not to how wide the roads used to need to be as wide. Um, you know, so you get any visitors and parking and you're even more restricted. So on top of all of that, um, and I noticed there was a turning circle for refuge um, lorries or, or large ones, but um, what about emergency uh, access uh, coming through? Captain? It's part of the thing with shared circle street, there's just no spare space. Yeah. And what bothered me in particular was the fact that there are no footways for children from these houses to get to the playground. Yeah, I was just looking at that, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they shared um, surfaces, uh, so they don't get adop adopted. Well, because County, it must be very County expensive can... for Buckinghamshire Council to maintain a uh, block paving type well, of arrangement. They, they are unwilling to say it. When it starts going wrong, you know. Yeah. I mean, this, I think this is one of the reasons why Lace Hill's taking so long to get the adoption sorted. And, and to put um, other services in, as we've just mm -hmm. had on um, Page Hill with uh, um, Giga Clear. You know, yes, they tarmac over and stuff, but when it's um, block paving, you know, yes, you can take them up, but they never go back down the same way. This is not to do with this application, it's to do with the lay seal, so I'll comment. Lay seal is going to be adopted. Um, he has finally, after, I think I've been talking to them for nine years um, <laughs> with it. Um, um, I'm sure that once the roads are adopted, someone will claim that they achieved it. Um, um, as, uh, within five minutes, somebody will be up there for a photograph. Um, but that took nine years, so um, and that was it's been heavy going to say the least. Um, and the highways will be adopted. Um, my last correspondent said that actually, I believe, till corrected, they're what they call in the period of snagging, which is quite a long period mm -hmm. to actually make sure that they actually are conform. It's even when adopted, they have to meet the highway standards. So. This is an, an unusual, but that was a particularly um, bad situation, which we've all discussed. But um, I'm only saying that because the chair, um, Catherine, referred to that, and I think it's information I might not have shared. Well, there's, a, there's a lot of block paving in the Tindrick roads, apart from the spine road. And there's, there's been discussion about whether that's the Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn, for your notes. Just one thing I've got down here is about, is this the time to ask for a 20 mile an hour speed limit? <laughs> <laughs> or does that wait till you got that agreement? <laughs> so what we have tonight, um, you, you've heard what I, I read out, which is based on Catherine's notes and discussions we have this afternoon with the briefing. Um, added to that is Roger Newell's very concise um, comments about the 
the trim, lack of trim is, about the colors, about the slates, um, most particularly though about the developer continuing to ignore the Buckingham design guidelines, which is very much part of where we are. And, um, then I added the piece at, at the end of mine about, uh, should we go for a section 106, a green request for health provisions? If we yes. have the others. Yeah. I don't know if the town plant has any view on that. That seemed to be sensible, all things considered. If you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, Councillor Ralph this afternoon made the point. Now perhaps we should start asking for this on all big developments yes. so they, yeah. they get the message. Yes. Well, of course, the other consideration is around green spaces, whether we want to make a request mm -hmm. uh, for that to be the S106 initiated conversation. Yeah. So, Councillor Harley? Just, I just want to challenge the view that this has to be rugby here. Just because it's next door to the rugby clubs, we know that the Buckingham Hockey Club would like to return to be in Buckingham. Why shouldn't it be a, a hockey um, site? Why does it have to be a rugby site? I know that we're popular among some members around the table, or indeed in the town, but I do know there are lots of, we have, you know, we have a, a the national class hockey team in Oxford, and they, they would, I'm sure, they would love to have a site within the town. I think we should at least raise that question. If it counts as touch, well, I don't think um, whether we determine what this is um, for the use of the pitch is really for today. I think we had took an earlier decision which was agreed by council, which was to allow. The town clerk to be able to, which is voted through, to allow the town clerk to be able to discuss, regardless of what we said on applications about section 106. So he doesn't need to ask for us to do that. He, he will automatically do that because we don't took the decision of council. This is to do with the application. That's why I'm saying it. We took it indirectly because we took that decision. So I presume that the town clerk doesn't need our instructions to do that. And the decision about what that pitch would be used for has been discussed I think in the period when um, that's Harvey was there I do believe we have visits um, from organisations and I do think that was way in advance and we need to go back and check because it's nothing to do with the application what our previous discussions on this site actually said uh, which were voted on and agreed so I think we need to check that we need to check whatever we do before we rush into making another decision. If, if it was that after whatever happens with this site, it comes back, it will then come back to this council to determine what it does with that land, if it was ours, if it was in agreement and, and working. So I think all those discussions come back to there. But whatever we do, we must be competent and competent of what decisions and stuff we've said before. We can't keep trying to change in our minds because that's the way that we make mistakes. And if we need to change it, we have to be pretty sure why we are changing our view on something. So I, I just say that and uh, 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 as a comment, because the two things, this isn't a planning issue, whether we take over it, because that will come at a later stage. So I hope that helps my clarity of view on this stuff. And I will remember everything that everybody said in all those meetings. <laughs> I believe the point was that the rugby club wanted junior pitches close to its clubhouse. At the moment, the juniors train on the Maytorn playing field next to the cricket pitch. And that is divorced from the club itself. It is a club after all. Mm. Um, the deal would be that if they were allowed the junior pitches on that land, they would maintain them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, on the sports pitches, uh, I think the problem is that the higher in county or uh, status you get in the club, they then require uh, artificial um, surface and not just a uh, grassy area. So that may be an issue if we were to take it on and all that kind of gives me that goes with that. Thank you. Councillor Dennis? I was, I was just going to... Um, Reiterate um, that the um, rugby club has grown. Um, there's now um, quite a large um, female um, membership. Um, 
the, um, there's um, girls' teams, the, the signets going from under under 11s, I think. Um, they're, they're fielding two full um, swans teams now. Um, so the, the, the need for pitches um, for matches has, has increased quite considerably. Thank you. So we're ready to take a vote on this. It sounds from everything that's been going on that we are going to propose this for everything that's uh, been said. Who would like to make a proposal? No? Oh, Councillor Harvey. <laughs> well, I would propose that we continue to object to it because it is outside the legal plan and we should be consistent. We recognise it's really developed, but it is outside the legal plan. And therefore, I think we have no option other than to oppose it. But we recognise we're not stupid. Um, that it's probably going to go through, in which case all the stuff we talked about this evening would go in as a rider to say we object, but in case it does get appointed, these are things that we would like to be considered as being part of the prevention development. That's what I would propose. You're proposing that, maybe a second for that. Councillor Ralph, thank you very much. No, just, I'd, just to note that I should be abstaining in yeah, case no, by the no, misfortune no. I ever get to determine. Yeah. Thank you. Um, let's take a vote on that. All those in favour that we oppose this for all the reasons we've spoken about, that is unanimous with the exception of that's a such for its name. Thank you very much. Um, not for consultation, three tree applications, all of which I believe were dealt with by email. Yeah. So I'm really happy with those. Thank you. Uh, planning decisions, item seven. A um, couple of those that we opposed. One of them was 37 Well Street, um, just, just below the church, where we objected to the, a new gate. They withdrew the gate. Um, so, in, in effect, that's, we got what we wanted there. And that, that was then approved. Um, Harris Way, we opposed the side and rear extensions, and we objected to the flat roof on the extension. The officer commented that while the flat roof may not be in keeping with the Buckingham design codes um, and the roof of the existing dwelling, it is set back and away from public view, so she, she didn't have a problem with that. Um, just looking down further, as we report Sir Landolf, Walnut Drive approved. <coughs> The chiropractor's sign in at the bottom of Summerhouse Hill has been refused because it didn't comply with relevant policies, but they said they would approve an acceptable sign if it met guidelines. So um, um then just to mention, um, it's only come in today that Nelson Street would block end of last week, Nelson Street convenience store. Has had its planning retrospective mission refused for all the advertisements on the front of it. Um, it has been brought to our attention. There may be some coloured flashing lights on the building, and I don't know if someone would like to have a look at it sometime. That was mentioned to the back of the Is it? <laughs> You're not suggesting we go there for a rave, are you, Jen? It was cheap, cheap beer, though. It's cheaper than petrol. Uh, beer. <laughs> that's a, beer is cheaper than petrol. That's a that's a mind-boggling thought, isn't it? I'll give that as a consideration, but I'm on antibiotics, so I won't be able to do anything about well, them. We know what the chairman is thinking. Anyway, that's, that's just to note that has, that has been refused. Um, item 72, Planning Inspectorate, an appeal has been lodged against the refusal, also in Nelson Street, 32 Nelson Street, for internal works and external render and paintwork. We have no objection as long as the heritage officer was satisfied, but he has in fact recommended refusal about the Lots of historic fabric and plan form that failed to preserve the architecture and cause less than substantial harm to the designated heritage asset. So that is a matter for appeal. Any members who wish to make further comment, the closing date is the 15th of April. 
but we've already made we made our we weren't opposed to it. So the they were quite minor alterations. Yeah. But it involved putting it downstairs too. Mm. Which, mm. as it's an ex pub, I'm quite surprised it hasn't already got. But <laughs> it would be yeah. moving a partition and doing some plumbing that involved taking the floor up and things like that. But we just thought it was makes yes. a nice house. Yeah. It it's the white one straight opposite to Intuit Road. End. Oh. So as we didn't oppose it in the first place, mm -hmm. um, we just leave it to the heritage officer to fight it out with the yeah. planning inspector. Thank you. Um, Buckinghamshire Council matters. Item eight: to Receive news of Buckinghamshire Council new documents and any other information from Buckinghamshire Council members present. Councillor Stuckery, the floor is yours. Um, well, just briefly, I went to cabinet last week um, to discuss the. Um, you remember that. All of us, um, when we were fighting for improvements on the Tingit Road development, we all fought very strongly to include a cycleway and convertivity to it. I had a response verbally at the cabinet meeting from the cabinet member. I'm waiting for the written response to that. Um, I believe once I get that, because it was said in the public, I can then circulate that. What was pleasing in one aspect was the cabinet members' acceptance that they got to build the footpath. And there was a discussion around the necessity to discuss uh, a, a material change in the planning considerations, which material change will be service, I believe, though he didn't directly cite it, but um, is the footpath across the historic ground of the um, the the parkland which is where St Rumble's well is so and they were discussing that with archaeology to 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 ascertain what they could do there and it would be a material condition so though it wasn't what I call a first um a, a complete blind in success it wasn't um it wasn't success in one way that, that there was a verbal acceptance that that these things had to be done and a verbal acceptance so I think that there's a whole range of trunk of things to do with Tindrick Road that this fits into, and I won't go into the other areas tonight, but I think what we do when we get that is bring it back to, to either uh, um, the chairman, of, the mayor and the, um, and the chair of planning can discuss where we take it then, because I think it's quite an important thing that we are all together on trying to um, get the cycle way and everything put in, because you will recall that we met on the Tingit Road um, to discuss the 30 mile an hour limit, which is still, um, the decision has not been made public yet. Um, and so if that decision was retrograde and, 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 and negative, this is more prominent that we get this cycle way in because the whole point of this date was to, um, when we looked at it and considered it all those years ago in 2015, was to make sure that that we got some children traveling on the without going in a car. So that's important. Um, the other matters to do with Buckinghamshire Council, um, we will be going to council um, unless they term up to say that the motion that's been drafted is not fit in a legal within the constitution. It's been accepted, I think, um, because you will be aware that of all the economics in the country. Poverty is going to be a big issue and food poverty is going to be something. So we can see how that goes. Um, I, I'm going to a planning meeting this week. I've had, I've been to a health meeting the other day, which strange enough, just link back to planning is my understanding um, is that um, the swan practice section of health is still in we're still in discussions with them about their correspondence what it means because they're irrespective of a planning application and the development going forward there's legal obligations and things they have to meet um, they have to demonstrate that when there's a change in service that that change of service doesn't impact on people so that's working through i understand that it was discussed at the um, League friends that that they believe that they've got a financier to finance the building. 
There's nothing in correspondence anywhere. And there's not a minute from the doctor's surgery to do that. But I understand it was said in the meeting. Well, that is correct. We will find out. But it, if that was um, that information is correct, it would be the same people who built the care home. Um, that in itself raises a whole band of questions, which I don't think I'll raise tonight. But there are a whole band of interesting questions that raises up. So some things are moving forward. Some things are the same. And after tonight's meeting, clearly, um, I need to go back and establish on the Morton Road whether that comes to committee or not, because it would be quite a shame if you didn't get your opportunity to speak after <coughs> changing the constitution to allow you to speak, personally changing the constitution with agreement, of course. So I think that's enough. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Well, you haven't finished yet because uh, the next item, uh, well, first of all, any questions for our sharp councillors present? No, thank you, Robert, for that. Um, so the next item, 811 is Ozil Way. Um, Robin had a Zoom meeting yeah. for an hour with. Um, Do you want to waste development for planning? You You're happy to take them through it, Chairman, and then I'll yeah, answer well, the it's question. All, it's all there. I think members have read yeah. it. Yeah. Is there anything um, you want to add? Or, yeah. it's, it's, it's quite a long document. It's quite a long document. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and just for information, they have seen it, um, they have seen copies of it. It doesn't read particularly encouraging. Um, I don't think um, the attitude, I think, in that document was um, hard nosed and fiscally um, um, driven. Um, I'm, of course, lucky because fortunate that I could use my position to get a meeting with them. I thought that was my job to do so that I could share my information with you, with yourselves as a Buckinghamshire Council, because that's my primary job is to work with you. So I think that the uh, whole way they approach it and the thing that came out of it um which worried me um they made overtones so that they could um they were able to make a contribution to build on another development um to land which is Embleton Way and use a field on Embleton Way which wasn't theirs when I'd asked them about making a contribution to um you remember we discussed some months back, all of us about there's no community hall there, and and, and we all discussed it, and we were all horrified. Um, so they made the view that that they would make a contribution which is determined <coughs> into Embleton Way. Well, that in itself is um, strange because it's quite that means that anyone from there to use their thing has got to cross the road to use the facility that they funded. I pointed out to them that they might um, need to look at the covenant on that land. Um, to which they said that they thought that wouldn't be a um, too difficult thing to do. Um, my worry with it is that when it comes to the Section 106 agreement for that <coughs> land is that there's several things that stare out at me. Is Anything that's written in that Section 106 agreement, we need to insist it says Buckingham. Um, and if it says education contributions, we need to insist that it says Buckingham. I believe that they were talking about making a contribution, but we need to make sure it actually says Buckingham. Catherine spotted long ago on this um, when we were doing the Tingit Road thing, and, and, and she picked up, it said Buckingham Shear, and, and Catherine picked up on the Tingit Road to make sure it says Buckingham, because the council is Buckingham Shear Council now. So you could get a situation if we don't make sure the Section 106 agreements, whatever they are, mention our town, that we could have 500 houses or 420 houses built and never contributed for education, which could legally go down to um, Marlow and build a school. So, um, and because it's within the council, the one council. So that worries me. I came out of the meal meeting feeling quite um, um, challenged, but I did, um, I did behave reasonably professional all the way through it and thumped the table afterwards. But, um, I hope that helps. Any questions? Hope, hopefully, I'll be able to answer them. Yeah. Councillor Harvey. Yeah, I think it's a very illuminating document and meeting, obviously, Robert. Thank you for that. Um, I, I, yeah, well, I'm, I'm curious about this 10% that they, they mentioned a couple of times, what that actually means. So it might be the second one there. But what I would say at the end is when you said, should we meet again? And their answer was, if we're still involved. 
mean, that's the problem is you've got mm -hmm. people negotiating the future of our town who see this as a project that they will simply move on from fairly rapidly and they don't really care. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where things go wrong is people are developing this, don't really care, they'll just move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. That's why the stuff that we're talking about really ought to have that control or the size control because we have an investment in the long term future. They're just simply seeing it. I think they do see that the planning gain as a as a way of earning more money. It seems to me. It seems to me that the actual biodiversity and so on are basically of interest to them because of the money they can make out of it. Uh, That's the impression. Um, but say some more about this ten percent net gain. The ten percent net gain. I really apologise that it was a phrase they they used throughout their conversation, the 10% net gain, I don't know whether that meant community gain or, or, or financial gain, because um, it's a terminology they use and they kept, you know, like these business terms that they they use. So I'd have to um, think carefully that I could give you a proper answer on that. And I don't want to say something just for the sake of it, John. On the point that you made about their continuation, because they made it quite clear, I believe, that they were, what I call, um, I, I would use the term farm in this um, development as, a, a, as to get it through planning. And at some point they would pass it on to another developer. Now they make their money by, I don't think it's unfair to say so, and town clerk would correct me if I said something that wasn't right. They make their money by making the development more profitable yeah. um, from a developer's point of view. And then they can sell this on to a developer with much of the policy um, bedded in to the advantage of a developer, whoever that he or she may be. So I think you raised some really good points about this, but the planning department doesn't really have a choice in it. Um, they have to deal with the person who's put the application in and the landowner and whatever. But from the Section 106 <clears throat> points of view, um, we did go once to the Historical District Council to try and get them to as involved in the section as it's and this shows us exactly why a section 106 agreement should be drafted that um at the moment they're drafted in such a way that it says um lands will go to uh well the way the local authority has been drafted and this like lands will go to the um developer will place lands um, through a management company unless the developer wishes to get into a discussion with the lower authority. I understand that that isn't how it's done in Oxfordshire, Northamptonshire, and Milton Keynes and other authorities where it swung around the other way that lands would go to the local authority being town or district or, or um um, in our case, you Buckinghamshire Council, if no other person was to take it on, then it would go to a management company. The way that they're, they're acting is so retrograde for localism and so negative to us. That's my view. Um, but I understand other local authorities do it. And the one development where, to be fair, um, they did, that office has now come back to Buckinghamshire Council. Um, now she was away, she's come back now, uh, was Burryfields um, um, in Owsbury, um, was Burryfields is the only development that I can think of where they actually hit all the targets. And I think, um, Tilstan corrected that it was road in section 106 she worked on, she did it the other way round, um, which was a proactive section 106 to try and get as much out of it. Now we need to get really friendly with the, the officers and we need to convince the, the local authority about the localism of this. There's nothing else, what I've learned is, I know more than I did and I need to learn more than I possible to take in. But, but I hope that I've done you all right on that, but nothing you've said, John, is different. But I do know wh where we go with this. And I think that's for the town clerk to say, is where he goes with this now, because I think, my correspondence is now with the council. I think it's now for the town clerk, who's our principal officer, to deal with that correspondence 
and, and take any appropriate conversations forward because I can't, as a Buckinghamshire council, represent this council. I represent you in what I did. I think, unless the town clerk corrects me, now it's for the town clerk to pick that up and do the conversations. Would you agree, Paul? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Next stage is for me to get in touch and have a more formal conversation. Yeah, and, 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 and I hope it's not exactly the same. Yes. But at least we now know what you're up against. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robin, for that, that report. There's one thing that jumps out halfway through the second page where they were talking about perhaps using the Amberton Way building if it's small that it could be expanded. You pointed out as a covenant on the land. And their reply is we deal with restricted covenants all the time. There are ways to get around them. <laughs> Which to me is absolutely disgraceful being publicly admitted by a developer. Well, mm, I can't believe I've read that. Well, that's what they said. I gave them a copy of the minutes. They could have yeah. come back and challenged them before they come here. And they said that they did come back to me and say we've received them. Um, I think what they mean is they would find a legal way of of, of um, um, meeting the person who owns the covenant. I think that's what they mean. They don't mean they get by it by some illegal means. I think they mean say, the person who owns the covenant has legal weight with the person who owns it. That person clearly has a financial interest in that land because that's another mistake that it was Embleton Way ended up in the situation it was, which is without recanting it, for people who might not know, it was originally going to be a football pitch with a changing rooms and whatever. And because of the planning authorities actions and, and not actions in bringing that forward when they adopted the land, it ended up formed by the way, which is why we are where we are with the scout. That's a brief history of it. Yeah. So so I do think they would go to the landowner and, and negotiate with the person who owns the legal tenure of that land, which is, though it's in the responsibility of now Buckinghamshire Council, the person who owns the covenant owns what goes on there and the covenant's put on it so that they can profit from that covenant. Um, so that's what I think they meant, um, Chairman, not that they would find some illegal way around it. And I'm not a lawyer, but that's what I would think they meant when they said that. And, and I can't say that they said they were going to do something wrong. Yeah. Well, it's in writing in the agenda pack, so that it's now public, in public domain, so people will make what they wish about. So thank you very much for the report, Bob, and thank you, Catherine, for taking the notes at that meeting. That wasn't there, Catherine. It wasn't there. <laughs> Are you well there? No, she wasn't no. there. Robin's notes. They're my notes. They're very good, weren't they? They're very good notes. Right. You're very impressed with those. The best notes you've ever seen from right. me, weren't they? Thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. Um, an updated list of undecided proposals and attempts calling applications is attached. We've all seen it. Again, thank you, Catherine. We've done a lot of work this uh, last, last month. Any comments on those? Thank you. No, we'll move on. Well, we've already mentioned about when the next Buckinghamshire Council meetings are. As you know, we, the agenda's not posted yet for strategic sites on the 7th. Um, the... Oh, the, no, for the 7th of April. Yes, there is. Um, but... Nothing on that, yeah. okay? That's right. Um, item 10, it's not our remit, but um, Paul and I wanted to get this BP licensing out of the way. Um, verbal update. Yeah, thank you, because I said it here moment in full council last week, I put it on the agenda for planning. Um, so we've withdrawn out from opposing the license for BP um, because it appeared that we were putting the council too much liability of costs if we went ahead, uh, particularly not having sheep available to help us get it through properly. So to protect the council, it helps. It's a completely pragmatic decision because the two... Um other objectors, they, they withdrew immediately after the court hearing once they were told they could be liable for the other parties' costs, thousands of pounds. Um, it's moved on now. There's a new licensing committee. They've got new licensing rules. And um, uh, at the time we did it, it was the right time to do it. But it, it's now, it, it, it's history. It's another country now. So. Mm -hmm. Robin. Though it's not the decision we want to hear, it's the right decision. And the town clerk's representing the council correctly. Um, what you will find with the licensing policy, which went through Buckinghamshire Council, which agreed it's a whole council licensing policy, which is why it challenged, if you recall, when we discussed it, it challenged our limited time, which means that all licenses in Buckinghamshire have to be in conformity. They have to legally do that because they are one council and the districts 
through the action of the Secretary of State in allowing the council to proceed, abolished. This is going to be a theme that we need to study because they won't be the only thing that goes into conformity um, going forward. Hence why I mentioned section 106. So I think I found the town clerk and the chairman of what they said. We live and learn, but it doesn't stop you. Um, I did write on one application I was going to get involved in. And by the time I got the legal reasons, whatever, apart from turning up um, and actually finding the legal reasons to break it in committee as a member, it's quite difficult. And they always have really professional people there. And they do a great, I watched one the other day, and they do a great job of disarming a councillor if they want to, a lawyer. Um, so I think we've done the right thing. And I think we do have to be minded that when this comes up um, for 12 months, if there's an issue within this licence, that's when I think we can then raise questions that the licence isn't being acted as it was agreed. And then we can go to the licensing committee and say, at that point, we'd be better using our time and energy in our offices. If, if hopefully it's going to be all right. But if we found that um, people were um, causing stress to the neighbours, that would be something which we should raise. And I would imagine that the, the free Buckinghamshire councils would be only too pleased to do that. And if they don't, of course, I would do it in any case. Um, but, um, you know, and if they know I'm going to do it, they're more likely to do it in any case. So, um, but I think that's where we go. Um, and, and I thank everyone for what they've done, so I support the decision. Thank you. Any, yeah, any further licensing applications, of course, will return to the, uh, the prep committee, but we just wanted to get that out of the way, so thank you for, for that. Um, enforcement, does anyone have any new breaches? Councillor Ralph. Uh, before we even consider any new breaches, Chair, what about all the old breaches that are still outstanding? I'm not sure how many we currently stand at, but it, I think this is a substantial number. I don't know if the club can give us some guidance. Catherine? Um, I printed off the ones that were outstanding, but I didn't count them. Oh. But um, yeah, I would imagine that there's probably close on 20 that we've opened, but I've never, we never told if they're closed. So we don't get any fee unless we demand it. So um, if members would like, I can list them and write a letter and see if mm -hmm. enforcement admin can at least say if they've been closed and why. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would yeah. be a start, yeah. having, having a why, because we often don't find out if it has been closed, why mm. it's been closed. Yeah. It's very, very interesting that at the Towns and Parishes Forum, which I intended, we were encouraged as towns and parishes to report any potential enforcement breaches. Yeah. So they want us to do the reporting, but they, they don't, as Catherine says, they don't always come back. Robin? I did have a trip into enforcement the other day, because um, I felt that I hadn't tried the lifts out for a day or two. And um, so I went up to floor nine and met them and um, discussed various issues. What I am aware of is that they've got a will to try and turn the corner um, and that, that what happened was um, from the administration of the district council um, pyramid um, approach to staffing left um, them with lots of cases, um, which are historic. They've got a will to turn around. And they also have said that what they want to do is get into a situation where they'll come and talk to the town and parishes about how they're going to do it. I believe that the reason they haven't got to do that now is because they're trying to get through this list of applications. I have been to cabinet. I have been to council and asked questions on these things. There comes a point where you can get what I call bullying without frailty, uh, with frailty, because... You know, these people are working really very hard and they didn't cause the problems that they're trying to solve. They've come in to actually try and solve them. So I don't agree with where we are. But I do think we have to give the new head of the department a chance to actually make some in-rolls in it. She hasn't been in post that long uh, and, and she's got all of North Bucks to sort out. And if you imagine how many we've got here, multiply that across across the whole of the Vale area, which I really just shows you what a success Audrey Vale was and how when um, we went through and made all those decisions to get rid of quality officers all those years ago, 
what a, for the to lower the council tax, what an absolute success that's been. Um, 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 and now those decisions for fiscal reasons were really well thought out, which I objected to at the time. Um, but I was obviously didn't know what I was talking about, but that's how we are. Well, again, North Bucks heads, heads the lead because we were told at the same forum that compared with South Bucks, for every one enforcement that reported there, we reported four. So, mm. uh, Martin, catch a try. Yes, at the uh, bottom of uh, Page Hill footpath onto Stratford Road, they seem to have, um, gig it clear, seem to have cleared one of the old hard standings of a farm unit. Oh. Which has been there oh, for a long on, time. On, but on your side of the path and yes. at the bottom, yes. that was the hard standing that the site cut. Yeah, so well, exactly. Right. But they seem to have brushed it and cleaned it and edged it. And I just wondered what they think they're going to do with it because, you know, apart from another parking space, it's, it seems a strange thing to do for uh, workmen that could have been getting on with Is some there not better an things. Product or something or it because we used to have <clears throat> terrible problems with leaking water from that area. I don't think there's a spring above it. Isn't that where the area of that uh, funny drain is, where the the sump and then you've got the overflow. Mm. But anyway, um, just a, it's not uh, anything we, we uh, to breach, but it's uh, okay. as if, it, if anybody had any information about right. it. Mm. Yeah. They've read a right mess of crocus. Oh, <laughs> well, poor old crocus, yes. Yeah. We've got the best patchwork footpaths in Buckinghamshire. <laughs> <right? Page laughs> oh, uh, Councillor Davis, Frank. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, I was we, we mentioned at a previous meeting um, about the aircon units on the veterinary surgery on the high street. Um, on, I don't know if, if um, any of the officers have come and, and had a look, but it does seem that they've been moved from the side, whether that's just while they're doing the works on the pub. Um, you mean yeah, no, they've been moved from the side. Oh, you can see the where side. they were on the side. The building. No, they were on the front of the building. They are now on the front of the building. They weren't before. They've been moved to the front of the building. From the side. From the side. So from, 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 that's, that's the question no, that I think no. that needs to be asked of the... the um, um, Thank you. We'll, we'll make it. Is it conservation? Is it the building as well? Um, as it's to whether it's they're going to go back once the... Grand Junction works have yeah. finished. Thank Thank you, uh, that's uh, Catherine's looking through. If I like to be thought. Yes. Yeah, no, I can't help yeah. yeah. feelings that if they were on the side, then they were actually on Grand Junction territory. Yes. <laughs> right. They were overhanging somebody else's land. So any other, sorry, COVID breaches? I think this is something we ought to do when the breaches are I, I mentioned. Um, I think it'd be worth us asking um, is there any likelihood? of the roadworks um, to the Audi being completed in April. I say this because they were going to be completed um, nearly every month till April for the past six months. And and we need to ask whether they're likely to be completed. They said they were going to be. We also need to ask them um, when they're going to complete the roadworks, which we agreed, I think, um, from the roundabout, now, this isn't enforcement or this will come up later on the road things. Okay, we'll do it then, but I'll, I can say it all again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll revisit that. Uh, we are coming back to you anyway on item 12, Robin. Trees, Year of the Tree, which was um, moved to hear from the uh, town council. We on that now? Yeah. Oh, I'll talk again then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, basically, you recall that we were going to take this to council, but we were right in the midst of COVID and it got delayed and then went to the next council meeting and we didn't define an action, which meant we defined an action at the previous planning meeting, which means we're now at April um, when this should have been defined the year. I think what we agreed was to, um, which very much fits in with some of the applications we've got coming through with trees to be removed, to be maintained, and to actually, um, it seems a long time ago we discussed this because it was at the beginning, end of last year, to have it for this year, um, that we were going to make it the year of the tree. I don't think we still can do that in the sense that we've got a white pine going to go out in my late mother-in-law's property 
um, it's going to be chopped down for no good reason or maintained. We haven't got that decision. We haven't got that decision, no, but um, um, they, these things always start with a conversation and end up with a tree being laid down, doesn't it? Um, so we do need to do that, and we've lost all these trees. So I think what I would hope we'd do is use the good offices of our friends at the Buckland Society and this council together to actually sing a little song about the trees because we have lots of songs sung about we're going to plant 500,000 wicks, twi you know, twigs for trees. But each one of those won't take up any amount of carbon as what our substantial trees in our town suck out of the air every year. So I think we need to um, get everyone involved in Buckingham in if there's a tree application, speaking about it, um, if there's something to be done, being interested in it. Because if we don't do this, as we said in council, which Councillor Anthony Ralph supported me, um, was that we will um, find in five to 10 years time that our landscape will be somewhat diminished and all these trees will have been left because they may or may not um, be prejudiced to a house which was built next door to them. Um, so I, I, that's why I, I just hope we can do some press release around it and to actually talk about this. I think it's though it's a council motion, it's all of us now. Right. Um, if I could just bring Town Clerk Paul in here. Uh, on the action list, Paul, um, we've got an outstanding invitation to Neil Passmore and his crew to meet, meet up yes. with us. So have you got any further to report on that? Yes, very outstanding. So we, we hit a bit, a bit of a buffer with um, those above Neil wanting to talk to us first. Um, I have got a meeting before the next planning committee with, I think, the relevant manager. They have switched around a little bit. So I'll be able to report back on that and where we are. Thank you, that's helpful. Uh, Councillor Harvey, John? <coughs> OK, with regards to this being our year of the tree, I've got four proposals to make. <laughs> One is that we should, with every planning application, um, that, that is going to involve the removal of an existing tree, could be a small one, could be a large one, but that we would expect, we can't enforce obviously, but that we would expect every tree removed to be replaced by six decent sized trees somewhere. And when I say decent size, I mean like three meters high. That, that's the size tree, the ones that we planted um, you know, on, uh, when we were uh, tree planting a few, a few weeks ago. Secondly, again to propose to the full council, I think we should declare Buckingham a love tree zone. For those of you who might remember, there were many cities in the world who did themselves nuclear free zones, uh, most of which was a bit of, um, it's like there wasn't much nuclear there, and Oxford City Council was a nuclear free city, even though there were nuclear research stations within the city area and so on. But I think if we call ourselves a love tree zone. And then use that and in a sense grow that as to what that actually means um, over forthcoming months and years. And we put it on our letterhead, put out a press release, that sort of thing. But I think that these four council obviously to agree to that. Thirdly, I think we should seek to get some sort of spokesperson from the insurance business to explain to us the logic that they're using as to why they want to cut down trees rather than actually do something proper. With underpinning them as probably with substance, a problem that we've seen several times, and um, well, one opposite the mitre and on the hill, and so on. I think let's get somebody in, let's begin to understand where they're coming from so that we can tackle them with that understanding. And fourthly, I think we should join the Woodland Trust um, and become a sort of member, corporate member or whatever, um, and just support the work that they're doing to support trees. Um, around the country. So those are my four proposals um, that I'm making. Just to recap, every planning application, six trees from one. We declare ourselves a luxury zone. We ask for an insured speaker and we join the Woodland Trust. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Let's touch for it. Technically, we've agreed at Council that we are um, this is the year of the tree. So I don't, and it was difficult enough at full council. It was quite a fractious affair, if you record, in well, the actual meeting. We're not, although everyone voted for it, there was some conjecture from different members on 
how we would define that. I seek advice from the town clerk because I think what we could do here is define our mission um, in respect to that, in the, like where we do. It was deemed to come back here, it wasn't deemed to go to the environment committee because that means we can delay it to 2022 if we want to, um, or 2023. I know I'm conscious that we're in April now and this was meant to have been decided earlier in the year. So I don't have any problem taking on some of the points that Councillor Harvey says as aspirations of what we would do. I think all the points that you propose would something that we would then, as we, we've agreed the principle, we would then recommend them to the Environment Committee as actions that they would see us to do. Because we've got to work in unison in the council we do with the issues here because it was a it was the cutting down of the trees which stimulated the conversation not the actions of the environment committee um so this is where it started why it's why it's come back here and the chairman's been good enough to move it forward onto the agenda so i'd seek advice from the clerk whether those actions can be agreed under this um because i don't see any of them are unfair or whether we agreed to do a press release about it and make a recommendation about those actions to the Environment Committee to be able to progress them because we'll get a charge back to us saying, well, that should come under environment. But they're very much things like um, what you're saying, I think should be done at the Environment Committee, but would be all actions within the year of the tree showing that we're considering all these things and discussing it. It's not to block you, John, it's just that that we should have made those amendments to it when we took it through council and we should have said it then to add it in because we got into that conjecture about trees didn't we which was unfortunate and um, and, and we didn't have an amendment and um, that's why I, I asked the town clerk if that's a reasonable assumption yeah i, mean, I think the, the reason it came to planning was because back to planning was because of this issue around planning and trees and the concern we've had around this table yeah. many many times about tpos and Buckinghamshire Council responding to, as you already said, student insurers. Um, so, I mean, joining the Woodland Trust is probably a full council thing, and just glancing at their website, I'm not sure we can. Um, we can investigate that. Um, the sorry, my mind's gone blank on the other three. Six for one trees. Well, sure, sure, the thing to do is take, take John's, if we agree with John's four recommendations, just make them recommendations when we report to the council and the council can then or, or you could make the recommendations direct to plant to environment which would be quicker yeah okay that, they can take the decision can they yeah, yeah. if it's been there to me hmm. either way we need a second yeah yeah i think on the four i'm moving forward the insurance speaker is germane to us yeah yeah that's that's, that's, that's <laughs> the issue for us i think yeah. we can decide the point we need to that we will invite somebody here in the future and explain to us yeah. that I'm sure speaks about trees as well. Right, close that now. Yeah. So let's second that. That's Fran. That's Fran. All those in favour? Yes, that, that's unanimous. Okay. Secondly, as a planning committee, I think we can also decide that we will seek whenever a planning application comes comes our way, that involves the cutting down trees, that we will seek that the developer, whoever the developer is, plants six substantial trees for every one that they cut down. Well, that's a good one. Not necessarily on that side. What? Not yeah. necessarily yeah. on that side. Not necessarily on that side, somewhere yeah. else. You know, it could be on our land, up the Blake's Hill. Or, or, or somebody, somebody else's land. We don't land. mind where, yeah. and, we'll, and we'll help facilitate that if we can. Mm -hmm. But I just think there's a way to refer yeah. to the tree. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're proposing that. I am that. Yeah. Fran, 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 yeah. Yeah. All those in favour? Oh, sorry, Karen, in black. <laughs> um, <coughs> I was just thinking uh, about this planting of trees. They could be a bit random. Um, is there any land that town council owns that could be put forward as the creation for other wood? We've got the cemetery, which we can plant. We can actually get them to plant some trees in there. But I think that the, the short no. answer is no. We we are really no. low on. Available lands trees. Yeah. We're going to buy some. Anyway, we have a proposal and a second. All those in favour? Um, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those against? One against. Abstentions. Thank you. 
All right, and the third one about luxury zone, I think that's something we can take back to full council. Yeah. And I don't think it's I don't think it's an environment because you think I think that's a kind of council full council why big for us to decide. Um, and to then and then as part of our plan, we will see that. It might be more logical to package that together with the uh, Woodlands Trust membership. Yeah. Yeah. And send them to environment. Send them yeah. to environment. Let's be the first council in the country to declare ourselves a luxury zone. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll make that a thing. And then other councils might merge on with us and do something similar. And then the idea will then rip and change and develop over time. So, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> everyone agree with that? We'll go to environment. Yeah. yeah. To, to environment. Yeah. I'm yeah. happy with that. All those in favour? Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll second, second it. Second yeah. All those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Against abstentions. One abstention from the man. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move on to chairman, can I ask that we that we do a press release of what we've agreed? Um, because we can say that's what we've agreed in committee after the motion, so that we actually get some purchase on the fact that we've actually done it. Because we can do that because it's full council has agreed it. And, and that's where it's come back. It voted unanimously to with abstention, but abstain, which the minute you say they abstained, um, um, to abstain from supporting it. So that's been agreed, and that's why it's come back here. So I don't think it's unwieldy of us to actually now go out and say what we said. Are we going to wait till September? Are we going to say it's a year of the tree? Um, um, so I think that shows some purchase forward because um, we've done that. And the other bits that go to environment. We can then, when that goes to the Environment Committee, we can then get a second bite of the cherry, hopefully that the Environment Committee will say all those other things that we want to do, which brings it back up again and reinforces our intentions of the year of the tree. And I think that that's, that, that's a perfectly good thing to do. If we don't do it, well, we might as well not agree the motion. Oh, no, cut again. Yeah, thank you. Just um, on, on really what Robbie's been talking about, about the year of the tree. I think one of the reasons that people were sort of prevaricating when it came to full council was that what does it mean? And I see what Councillor Harvey's now said is actually putting that, making something concrete out of oh, sorry, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's six <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a practical outworking of that yeah. original idea of having the year of the tree. Because what does that mean? Yeah. What does yeah. year of the tree mean? Or, for instance, what does love tree so mean? You know, I, I don't know. Really, that's I wasn't sure that's why I abstained about that because I couldn't quite get my head around what it meant. Sure. But you know, we've got to have practical yeah. outworkings. Yeah. What does it mean? year of the tree. Otherwise it's meaningless, isn't it? And I think that's what's helpful tonight in those thoughts. I think just to comment back if I can, when you put a motion to council, um, if you want to write a motion which actually says everything, the motion is to get the something to do. What was unfortunate about the meeting is that we spent more time talking about it than actually we didn't as a council do what we did tonight. Which is what you said, Madam Mayor. Um, we spent a lot of time discussing about it. I think the motion was drafted and accepted and actually stated the reason why we would have the year of the tree. So I think it's unfair to say it didn't say it. What was was um was people's opinions around it, very much like you said. But I think with the gap, it has meant that we've come forward with some better options. It would have been much nicer if we'd um didn't define um tightly enough. At the meeting, what we wanted to do, which is unfortunate because we spent a lot of time talking about why and voted for it and didn't define. I think the minutes say that, and the web and the meet, and I'll remember what it said if you go and watch the meeting and what people said to record. Um, Councillor Davis? I was just going to say, as um, Madam Mayor um, says, um, can I just say that um, and put, put the expression, put some meat, meat on the, the bone. Um, yeah. 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 Put some branches on the trees. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Could I just let members know? Some, some, yeah. of you, some of you have been here for more than three hours yeah. now in meeting, so if we could just move yeah. the site yeah. on and yeah. decide that uh, Council Stutchby has proposed that for a press release. Uh, is that our agreement or is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. agreed. Yeah. Yeah. All in favour? That's it. But we can't at this point say that Johnny Woodman's trust no, no. hasn't gone in front of uh, 
environment. Um, right, we'll just finish off with the trees then. Um, updated list of felling applications you've seen. Thank you for those, Catherine. Um, and to note for information, three Lombardy poplars at Bernadine's Way are to be felled, they're unsafe. That's going to be carried out by Buckinghamshire Council. Mm -hmm. On, um, on their boundary, and to note for information, the Royal Latin School is going to fell a larch, which is uh, actually rotten, and it's not a preserved tree, which the Royal Latin at the time believed it was. Um, thank you for the update. Um, thank you very much again for that on the section 106. Applications and progress. Mr Rowley also reports discussions are ongoing with use of the balance remaining distracted fields car park so that's just um matter of report at the moment thank you uh matters to report um robin are you to mention yeah, no, about the road, road i just would ask that in support of things one's doing if you could write to um um transport Buckingham, ask them for when the date will finally be that they do the work on the highways to by the audi um it's been going on for some time every time it gets close to being completed. It's either HS2 or, uh, or East West Rail takes priority over the A41, which is an arterial route to the coast. And secondly, that we ask um, Buckinghamshire Council if they're likely to live in living lifetime, that they'll actually do the last section of the road, which they agreed to do some tremendous amount of years ago, um, which is the section from Badgers um, of the Bletchley Roundabout to the Badgers Junction, yeah. um, which they have not done. And, and and all these things seem to be full foul of East West Rail and, and, and whatever. And that seems to be a good reason for dropping our road works every time. If they don't do it soon, it, uh, I, and I don't mean it to the poor people of Steeple Claydon, who have got far more problems with um, road works than we have, to be fair to them. But, but our roads, if they keep leaving them long enough, will be um, heading towards the same condition the roads in Steeple Clayton. Um, um, they've got some way to go to there as bad as them, but um, they'll be heading that way. We will, we'll note that. Robin, thank you very much. Any other damage to purpose redundant side? Uh, um, yeah. On roads again, West Street um, is atrocious and they've um, painted yellow lines through the potholes. <laughs> 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 And they're the wrong lines. <laughs> wrong colour. No, they're the wrong lines. They they're took, they, they, they put in, they're supposed to have certain lines. Um, mm. I think the narrow ones. So um, conservation conservation yeah. lines. And they put in the ones which are for anywhere else. They went in a conservation zone and put in the thick lines, which we've had with them before. Um, we'll only have to wait at least three months and they'll wear out and then they'll come back again and put the wrong lines in again. Um, but I think that's it, worth... It, it effectively narrows the road as well, doesn't it? Because people look at the yellow lines and like, yeah, they, they drive in the middle of the road. So anything else to report? The only thing I've got here is that the four day closure of um, Stowe Road um, has, is not happening now. They've, they've decided not to film this week, but Stowe gave all their staff the four days off so they could take some <laughs> some leave. And so Stowe will be closed, still be closed during that portion. <laughs> Thank you. Um, chairman's items for information. I have no more date of next meeting, Monday the 9th of May, following the interim meeting. Thank you very much, everyone, for your attendance tonight. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Paul. Anyway, John, this will actually get something done about.